Hello everyone, let's go ahead and make some tea bag art today. Today I'm going to go ahead and show you how I prepare my tea bags to make art. And it's a bonus for me because that means I can make myself a nice warm cup of tea. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this out and we will get started. Now what I typically do when I have a tea bag that needs to dry, I just put it on this little paper towel that I keep on the counter. You can see I've reused it several times and I just lay the tea bag on that and let it dry. Um, maybe in a couple of days I'll come by and I'll flip it over so that it dries evenly on both sides and gets to the middle. This one is ready for us to process and use. I will show you uh, what I mean by process in a little bit. So after I've steeped my tea bags for a little bit, I just go ahead and pull it out. Give it a little squeeze. And then we're going to go ahead and lay it out on the paper towel. Now you'll need to flatten that out. Make sure it's as unwrinkled as possible so that you have more of an even drying time. And that's it for that part. We'll go ahead and let him dry and move on to our next step. And now welcome to my crazy filled art table. Here's just a few things you will need. Of course, you're going to need some water. A few more things to have is of course paint brushes. They don't have to be expensive, but I would recommend one that has a very, very fine, tiny tip to it. You will be doing some detail work. A white pen. A fine liner is always really handy to have. And of course a pencil. Now as for the paints, I'm going to be using a jelly gouache. You can use watercolors. Uh, sometimes I like to use a combination of watercolor and gouache. I always think that looks really fun. But I think today for just simplicity's sake, I might just stick with the gouache, but we'll see what happens. Now gouache can be really expensive, but these are just tea bags and they're just for fun. So I got a cheaper set that I found on Amazon. This is 18 colors, but of course they have smaller sets that are even less expensive. And if you have your primary colors, you can mix them together to get whatever else color that you might want. And now we're going to go through and I'm going to show you what I do with the insides of these tea bags and how I get them out. Now, the inside of tea bags are actually really good for your garden and for your plants. So, what I like to do is I just fill a measuring cup or just whatever, a bowl or a cup or whatever you have with the insides and then once I get enough, I'll go out and sprinkle the plants that I have in my greenhouse. And now sometimes I'll go through if I feel like the contents might still be kind of stuck to the bag. Go ahead and loosen that up. And then we're going to make a little snip. Come through and just cut. And all you got to do is pour your contents into your little container. And you can empty it out as best as you can. And now some people actually wash these a second time. I don't because I kind of like mine to have a little bit of a more rustic look to them. So you don't have to do that. These are just something to relax with and have fun. So if you don't want to go that extra step, don't worry about it. And now I get to do the same thing with all of these. Now these little tea bags are a little bit different. You see it's actually got a little string on here. Some of them are stapled. These are actually just tied on. So I go ahead and just gently pull it off. Make it into a little tube and dump it out. Now you can use them like this, but I actually like to go ahead and open them. Okay. 
And with these, you have an even larger canvas that you can work with. And you can leave this tag on or pull it off however you want to do that. And don't worry if it tears a little bit. Uh, that just adds some character to your piece. Some of you may have seen in my uh, Q&A video this little series I'm working on with the teapots and the teacups and sometimes the little wine bottles and just little fun things um, that I like to put on these tea bags. So I think I'm going to go ahead and make another one. But if you notice, I only have one teacup out of this whole series. So I think I'm just going to go ahead and make another teacup. And because all these are of the same, uh, roughly the same color, I'm going to go ahead and choose one of these um, that are uh, almost unstained. If you have some teas like this, this is like a, a combination of hibiscus and uh, berry teas that I've been drinking lately. If you have these, don't worry about trying to clean them or get this out. This just adds a uh, lot more character to your piece because you can use this color as part of your background and I think that would be really neat. This one, for instance, I could see becoming part of an evening sky as the sun is setting. If you wanted to make like a little miniature landscape, that would be really cool. But for now, let's stick with this one to keep on with the matching tone. And we will take our pencil and sketch a little teacup. Now, I am not an artist by any means. Um, and there are a lot of people who could draw way more fancy things on tea bags than I ever could. But I thought it might be fun to show you from, you know, someone who's kind of beginning at this and draws fairly simple. That way you can see that you can have just a lot of fun with this and relax and not have to make it over complicated. So for instance, I think I'm just going to put a little teacup in the middle and this can be a very rough sketch because you're going to be painting this and you can kind of clean up your edges as you go along with the paint. I think I'm going to go ahead and make a teacup that will match this right here so I'm going to make more of a mod handle on it Now, none of this has to be exact. You can see that some of my lines are crooked. Uh, they're not symmetrical. That's perfectly fine. And the reason why it's perfectly fine is because you're just putting cute little whimsical teapots and teacups onto a tea bag. It doesn't have to be a Picasso or a Rembrandt. You're just having fun with it. And sometimes the more whimsical the piece, the better it is. I like to go ahead and make sure I put in a line telling me where I'm going to put um, the tablecloth or table as it were. And now let's go ahead and just start with this and then as we go along, if we feel like we need to add more, we'll go ahead and do that. Now we'll go ahead and try as best we can to match this color right here. 
And remember to allow components to dry before you go on to the next because if you don't, you will have bleeding uh, from one color to the other. So I'm going to start up here with the white and by the time I get down to here, this will probably be dry. Now, don't worry about it looking kind of rough right now. Every single painting has what's called an ugly stage where you look at it and you think, that's awful, I'll never be able to make anything from that. But don't give up. Always try to go past your ugly phase because with some highlights and a fine liner, it's amazing what you can turn a little painting into. Now, we're gonna let this one completely dry. And in the meantime, I will show you this book, uh, Ruby Silvius. She's the artist who started this whole tea bag art craze. You can find her on Pinterest. You can find her on Instagram. And she's really cool. Now, she's an actual artist who does all kinds of complicated things onto tea bags. But when you're looking at her stuff, don't get disheartened because she's a professional artist who does this for a living. So, of course, she's had years of practice and schooling to get to where she is. If you're only able to do flowers or little landscapes or teapots, don't worry about it. We're just doing this to have fun, do something relaxing, and to get our creative juices flowing. But if you have the capability to do what Ruby does, then by all means, go absolutely crazy with these little tea bags. Now we'll go ahead and add some shading. Let's pretend that our light source is coming from this direction. So we'll add some shading to this side of the teacup. That way we keep our handle uh, nice and bright and easier to see. I have a little bit of this color left over from another project. Let's see if we can use this as part of our darkening. And now remember, we're not going to be too exact. We're just going to give the idea of shadowing. And now remember, you also have to shade your actual teacup. And I'm going to add just a little bit of that color you saw before just to darken it. Don't go crazy with it because you can darken uh, really... <laughs> really too much too quick and just give a little hint and now when you're satisfied with it if you noticed on this one to make the white background a little more interesting I actually took some more darker and just scribbled around on it for lack of a better term. So let's go ahead and attempt that with this one. I'm going to use the same color I used to shade with. And we're just going to squiggle. It doesn't have to be exact. It doesn't have to be precise. We're just doing this to add some interest to, well, really just to break up the monotony of the color in the background. Except I think I'm going to go ahead and add some to this also. You can see I'm just darkening a little bit on this edge just to kind of break up the monotony of this blue. And once you are finished picking at it, as I call it, <laughs> because I tend to pick on things uh, quite a bit until I call them done, go ahead and let that dry absolutely completely because we're going to come behind 
with our fine liner and our white pen. And this is very dry, so I think we're safe to go ahead and fine line. You can salvage many a dull little painting just by taking a fine liner and popping that little drawing out a little bit better. And there you go, it looks better already, but we're gonna go ahead and add a few little more details. So you see nothing too crazy, just really, really simple. But I'm gonna go ahead and add some little waves as if we've got some hot tea inside our teacup. Now you can call this done or you can continue to pick at it as I sometimes do. We could add some darker highlights over here to make this table pop out a little bit more. We could maybe add some little scribbles if you wanted to darken this up a little bit. So you have some other options if you want to try to pop this out even more. But I think we have a cute addition to go with our little retro 60s teapot. And we have yet another thing that we can add to our little teacup collection. Now you can leave these loose, you can paste them in a book, or you can actually sew them together, which is probably what I will end up doing with them. And there you go, we have one more tea bag to add to our collection. I hope you enjoyed this video and that it inspires you to try your hand at tea bag art drawing of your own. Now remember, just relax with it, have fun. Don't go crazy like you saw with this little teacup. It does not have to be complicated. It just has to be fun for you and something that you enjoy. Even if you want to just paste them into a book and keep them all to yourself, that's completely fine. And don't listen to the little voices in your head telling you that you can't do it because you don't have the talent. Even some of the greatest painting masters of all time had doubts as to their talent and sometimes wanted to give up, but they didn't listen. They kept on and they got better. So I hope that you keep going as well. Thank you for watching this video. And if you'd like to see more of these little art videos, let me know in the comments. I will see you for our regular content later. Bye.